what does it really mean to be a man and how do I own that? And with the conversation culturally in our in our society where everything's kind of now fluid and then you you also see the reaction to that. I'm an alpha and I'm a, yeah. you know, all, and that, I'm right. a sigma, I'm a, all this stuff that I'm like. To prove that they're like the most manly men What's up, family? Welcome to another episode of the Radical Middle Podcast. I'm your host, Tommy Nixon. Of course, I'm here with my girl, Lynn Marie. Hey What's up, Lynn? And today, uh, we're talking about the things that leaders need to talk about. Let's talk about the men's, right? Mm. Let's talk about masculinity. There's this thing going around. Uh, my daughter had talked to me about this, and she's like, have you seen that thing around, like, man or bear? Why? Like, what are you talking about? She's like, yeah, like, they ask all these women, like, if you were... Uh, alone in a forest, would you rather be alone in the forest with a man, you know, that you don't know or a bear? And a large amount of women were like, I take the bear. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Cause I'm like, so <laughs> what is, so Lynn, what is it? You know, is it the man or the bear? Like what, it, what, <laughs> what are you taking? <laughs> um, I'm going to take the man. Um, I'll take the man, you know. I grew up around boys. Yeah. Got two brothers and all the things. Um, was a tomboy growing up. So yeah, I'll take the the man. But I'm not I'm not mad at the sis that that chose the bear. Like I'm not looking at them sideways, like, oh, what's wrong with you? Because I get it. It's a jungle out there. Yeah. So okay, so this is what I want to talk about because it's like there's there's a whole thing about toxic masculinity and all that. But it feels like there's a conversation here that's like, what is, what does it mean to be a man? Uh, uh, you know, to be masculine, to, um, to em embody what that means with within the kingdom of God. Right. I think outside of that, I kind of like, yeah, whatever you want. I don't. I'm not here to place that judgment or be like, you know, I got my own preferences and beliefs. But okay, but. The area of tension for what I'm talking about is masculinity within the the realm of the kingdom of God. Like, what is it that God's calling us to when it comes to men? And why would, you know, the sisters kind of go look, be like, nah, I'll take that bear. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, and, and what that says <laughs> and means about men. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think there's so much to this, honestly, Tommy. Um, <laughs> where do I start? <laughs> I think this has been my encounter for a lot of... I'll give you my upbringing, then I'll give you my encounter. My dad's a pastor, raised around boys. My dad has never made it a point to tell me that I had to be... Uh, I had to dumb myself down around my brothers or that yeah. they were the leaders and I had to like just shy away and take their lead. He's always told me that I was a leader. Actually, he's told me many times like, and your siblings, you're the leader. You know better. <laughs> like, the, and I'm yeah. like, dang, like what did I do to deserve this? <laughs> but then I get into the world, especially, you know, my vocation um, within church spaces and Christian spaces. And I have men who like wouldn't even acknowledge me. I've been in rooms where I was not acknowledged. Or I, I remember running an internship program at a particular organization and the CEO being introduced to me, you know, whatever, and then introducing me to someone else as one of the interns. Oh. Not the person that runs the program, right? Um, and that's stuff that has happened to me yeah. over and over in Christian spaces with men because I think it's just like a power boys club type of thing that it's just so hard to get into. Yeah, so what what I'm interested in is what does that say about our understanding of what being a man, yeah, a man is? is like yeah. what what is that like? One, what I hear from you is there's an inherent one of the things we have to wrestle with with as as men in the kingdom of God, and that you already have to wrestle with because it's imposed on you. But is is that there's a belief that we're better? Oh, absolutely. There, there there's more value placed on superiority yeah uh, yeah uh, being a, a man and mm -hmm. and i experienced this i have four daughters after every daughter was born i still to this day men do this to me where they're like oh man yeah man <laughs> that mu man that must be so hard wow man and i always was like 
no, that's a gift, you know? Yes. Like my girls are amazing. Like I don't, I I wasn't like, oh man, man, a third girl, like man, let's try again and hopefully I get that, you know? Yeah. Now, you know, to be transparent, I do have a son. He's our fifth child who was an absolute surprise. Like we yeah. weren't trying for this child and he happened to be a boy. We're so glad for it. He's a gift. But I, so there, so that's what I hear from you, right? So there's one of the things we have to wrestle with. This is idea uh, that men are superior or better, which we know from scripture is false. Absolutely. But the, the funny thing about that is the same scripture is being used by a lot of these men, right? To add to their own philosophy or whatever, mm -hmm. that they are better. I recently had a conversation with a guy who goes, I, I begin to talk about like, he goes, well, from my understanding, it's God, then men, then women, then children. Oh, uh, you know what that is? That That's from a false teaching from the umbrella theology. And and that is actually, and I wish actually, I, I wish we would have, I, we can look it up and I could disprove it from scripture, but I, um, and there's a whole documentary on this and mm. it was, it was, um, there's a certain way about how men, um, should raise their families and how women should be. And there was a full movement and I'm blanking on the movement right now. Ah. It's killing me. But was it a cult? No, what? It's not. And okay. in fact, it's like, it was a huge part of the like homeschool movement. Oh, it was a okay, huge okay. part of like, um, but here's what's so crazy about it. Okay. The man who started and was running it uh, and had all these ways to, you need, this is what women need to do. They need to be in the home. They And they had the umbrella thing, you know? Um, and this is how you raise your, your child in the Lord. Um, he was neither married nor had children. Of course. <laughs> just, just an expert, just on like, the, expert on the text. Right. And I'm like, <laughs> wow. So, okay. So that's one where if we wrestle with attention, we know that's not true. But what what else is out there that we're like, what do you see as far as like the ideas of being a man or, or masculinity within the body of Christ that we need to... I think a lot of men, I actually, as I'm, you know, as I'm getting a little bit older and interacting with a lot of these men, I feel sorry for them because I think there's this pressure to always have the right answer, yeah. to always make the right decision or the decision yeah. to, in quotation marks for those listening and not seeing me, <laughs> lead, right? Right. Um, so because of that, they're just like... <laughs> In this world unto their own, right? And they're so like um, consumed with this idea that they have to lead and they have to get it right that they just become jerks, mm. for lack of a better word, because nothing else matters. They don't hear anything else. They're not humble, right? Yeah. Because this philosophy is there, everything that they do is informed by, no, but I am the one that has, like, I am the one that, that has to lead this thing. I am the one that this falls on. I'm the one that God is going to come to. God, <laughs> this is something else I was told recently. God went to Adam first. Yeah. So I am the one that's going to be that responsible. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I'm like, wow, that's crazy. So God is not going to hold me accountable for anything. Wow. That's, is that's like, <laughs> that's, that's amazing. That's right? amazing. Yeah. Good for me. <laughs> <laughs> and I could be the, in, in a certain situation, right? In a, in the boardroom or in the church leadership team, I could be the one with the expertise in that area. Yeah. I could be the one that's been, uh, youth pastor for X amount of years. I could be the one decades uh, working with youth in the street and in the church. I could be the one with the answers, but they're not going to ask me because all that pressure is on them to make the decision and get it right. Which is which is interesting, man. That And I appreciate you as a man. I appreciate you saying like, I actually feel bad because there is that weird pressure of like, since society is, uh, a lot of it is built on the patriarchy and, and, you know, men that, that there's that downside to it too, where it's like, yeah, then they get all the, the we get all the pressure from that, which we weren't made for. Right. Like there's, there is that piece to, um, even in the word of God, the Azer, the, the, yeah, the, the whole, partner yeah. in that, the, um, to, to carry all that together. Um, I did, uh, I just saw this thing. I need to research a little bit more, but it talks about, so often I think men that you're describing in the church be like, you know, women were, were taken from our rib, right? This really small 
rib, you know, and, and so your whole being came out of this thing. Right. But when you look at the Hebrew word for it, it actually means side. So they thought it just meant rib. But really, when you think about the, it's it'd be the same word that they use for side of like this side of the door and that side of the door. Mm. It's the it's the yeah, the thing that that cuts something in half. Right. And you have two two sides of the same thing. Uh, and yeah. so and so there's an equality there that that was then created from that, which which then affirms, you know, that you're made in the image of God because Adam was made in the image of God. And so there there is that and which is is really interesting and so so what i'm hearing from you one is there's a for men some of the things we got to wrestle with is one we have to wrestle with this idea of superiority um two we have to wrestle with the idea of um uh of of carrying it all on our own Mm -hmm. like you don't have to have all the answers you don't um you actually don't have all the answers. Like, it's not Wait, only I that don't, you don't, don't have understand. to have it. I don't understand what you're saying. Right <laughs> it's not only that you don't have to have it. You just, you don't have it at yeah, all. Yeah. You don't have all the answers. Which I would, mean, no one does. Yeah, no, I get that. And that's yeah. God's design. In, in fact, I mean, that would save men a lot. Oh my goodness. Um, in our own spiritual walk, yeah. if we just continue to come to the, to the fact of, I can't, which is so antithetical to what, what is placed on us, right? Uh, 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 and being like, I, I am, I am created. So here's the hard thing about this: I am created to uh, provide. I am created to protect. I am created all those things. I think mothers and women and wives carry those things too. But I do think God made us different. In some Absolutely, of that. and, and I, th- there's some innate things in me that th- how men think and how. So I get all that. Mm-hmm. But when you come to Christ, it's the maturity is to go. I I can't. Yeah. I can do nothing apart from Him. Yeah. Um, and that brings that humility. And so, I love when uh, this pastor that I, she, my pastor. She was my pastor while I was in seminary in New Jersey. She um, would tell me because she was the lead pastor of the, her church, right? Yeah. And she's a church planter, and she would tell me, "Len, God is the head of our home." Like, yeah. she'd be like, God is the head of our home. Like, first and foremost, God is the head of our home. But sometimes we get so worked up about, like, roles or, I don't know, or what we, or expectations even, yeah. right? Um, that we forget that God is really leading this thing. And I think true, mas- I, I think we were talking about kingdom masculinity, yeah. what that looks like, right? I think the man after God's own heart is the man that's humble enough to say, I don't know, but God knows. Yeah. And I may have this position, but God is leading this thing. Yeah. Right. And not just say it like, Oh God is leading this thing, but also like put in the work and prayer and <laughs> yeah. submission and, you know, and even, even submission um, under earthly leadership and mentorship and guidance as well. So I actually think this is a huge one for, masculinity is that doesn't get talked about a lot is is mutual submission Mm -hmm. and when you know and and i don't just mean like well i submit to to the god and then everyone quote unquote below me submits to me like (laughs) so then my wife submits to me and my children submit to me and but rather that there's a there's a mutual submission there um the the verses that get used all the time is you know women submit to your husbands and then, but the very next thing is, and husbands lay your life down for your wife. There's a, there's a mutual submission there. I mean, it I, says it right before that, right? Yeah. Yeah. So one yeah, to another. Like, yeah. And so, and as Christ did for the yeah. church. And so a lot of that, I take that and I just go, the mutual submission thing is, is to admit one, I don't know everything. Yeah. I'm inviting you in on this Two, though. It doesn't, it doesn't shirk your responsibility. Cause here's another hard part about masculinity is you have you have men that take the responsibility too seriously and then men who don't take it seriously enough at all yeah yeah or at all so they they help create the baby and they don't father the baby absolutely they, um they and here's a weird thing too if there's mutual submission or there my, my wife and I are a partner in our marriage um but there is I will say you might not agree with this but yeah, I, yeah. I do feel like there's a different responsibility for me and my family 
from yeah. the lens of scripture. Yeah. And that God actually looks at me and is like, I mean, lay down your life for the church. Right. That's huge. <laughs> yeah, it's big. Right? That's huge. Yeah. But in the the laying down, man, I think about the posture of someone that would lay down their yeah. life for anything or anyone. It looks very different than the type of masculine leadership that gets put out there. Exactly. Yeah. I hear sacrifice. I And not like, I'm the provider, Humility. so I make the decisions. Yeah, yeah. It's like, no, bro. You're the provider, so you'll do whatever it takes to yeah. make sure that this woman and this your kids These, are not like, yeah. you know, stressed out, running around. I yeah. listened to a podcast. I'm not going to call any names, but it's real popular now. <laughs> and he talked about like he messed up and yeah. his wife had to like take up like all the responsibility in the house. And he said she came home one day and from work and he's like, what did you do? And she was like, I did Uber Eats. And he was like, dang, that completely crushed him. Yeah. But because of the decisions that he made. Right. She now, who was before, I think she was like stay at home mom and she did yeah. different things, had to, by any means necessary, get in that car doing food deliveries yeah. to take care of her three kids yeah. and him. Right. And there's something that it's so it's really interesting. It's like, yes, we're all about women empowerment. We're all like equality, all that kind of stuff. But there's something that's like, there's something about that's like, oh, that's not right. Do you know what I'm saying? But then I, I struggle a little bit with like, why is it not right? Because I have this like patriarchal uh, uh, structure in my mind where this is the way it's supposed to be. No, but the, because I think of that, because he he didn't lay down his life. He didn't. And I think that can look different ways. And I'm not, uh, hear me say this, friends. I'm not saying that women shouldn't work or that that men can't stay home or, you know, all that kind of stuff. I'm saying, but there's something there where it's like, how are you laying down your life? You know, and that piece, and women are called to that too. They lay down their life for Jesus. But in Absolutely. that verse, the call for me is, is that. Yeah. And so, and there's a strength to that that I think most, a lot of men puff up their chest to uh, project strength instead of this laying down yeah. that shows it. Because I'm, you know, ultimately I'm like, there's been a few times where Rachel and I weren't on the same page. When it came to a, a big life decision that's yeah, going to affect yeah. all of us. A few, only like maybe three times in our marriage. And after it, how many years? After 20, almost 21 years. Okay. Three times. Yeah. And in those three times, what would happen is I prayed about it. I went and sought the Lord. We'd go, you know, get into it. I'd get other people that, you know, what what are we going to do? And I really felt just, I was like, no, I, I think we really need to do this. And in those moments, uh, I think because of, I'd, laid down my life throughout the year she was like okay, okay i don't yeah. agree with you but okay and that was and and then and, and praise god that it, it did worked work out, out right? you know because I, I was like oh i could i was like so i'm like oh my gosh lord because that's lord, a lot of pressure right man yeah and so and and it and it did you know what i mean and but that was like a I was like, it was like in a weird way. It was like earned. It was like journey together. That's what I'm, that's exactly the point. If you're laying down your life as Christ did for the church, right? If you're showing up c consistently, right? If, if you know how to humble yourself and you're still secure, nobody's saying you're not a man because you're <laughs> humble. Like that's dumb, right? If you're doing all of those things, why wouldn't she trust you? Yeah. Why wouldn't she feel safe? Why wouldn't she know, right, like without a shadow of a doubt that this man is not doing this just to prove something. He's doing it because he cares about me and my family yeah. and, and on our, our family. You know what I mean? It just yeah. changes the game. It changes the game. Yeah. But if you're entering a situation and you have to lead with every single time, and this is in a marriage, in friendship, in the church, yeah. if you always have to lead with I'm the man. Yeah, right. I, it's that's exhausting. That's toxic, yeah. and it's exhausting for you. Aren't you tired? Yeah, I'm the type of person I love to. When I ask people questions, I don't listen as much as what they say, but how they say it and mm. like where it's coming from. I really feel strongly about that because I think people just say things because they want to say what's right. Yeah, but then the way they say they it, say you know, the yeah. way they say it, and I found talking to a lot of men is that they'll say something and then they'll just keep talking, and I'm like, oh, okay. So this is really from an insecure place. I think that's where my um, what is it? That's where I've kind of like laid off of them a little bit and been like, okay, I actually feel more sorry for you. Yeah. Because it's this kind of this level of like, I know I'm supposed to be the man, so I'm gonna say all these things, but the reality is like, man, I really don't know. 
and which is like a key thing for little for for little boys is this that that's that's part of the psychology of a of a of a, of a boy growing and and growing into adolescence is like can i do it like yeah. <laughs> you know and they're yeah. we're all walking around going like i really don't think i can but i i've just got to project strength yeah. and i gotta just do it fake it um yeah you fake it till you make it i, I definitely have lived a whole life of that yeah. um where you're just like i don't know you know but but there is that part you know to what you're saying it's kind of uncovering in the conversation is i do believe men have to be strong so the masculine you know masculinity and, and being a man there needs to be strength. I would say that for women as well. But I and I and I think those strengths look different and they're they're nuanced in a lot of different ways. But one, I I already kind of go, I already feel like most women I know, especially in the urban space, oh, yeah. are strong. Yeah. Like they're just my mom was like that, my sister, like yeah. they're strong. Men, on the other hand, I'm like, I feel like we we project strength. Right. And there's a fake there's a fake paradigm for strength. And, and I'll give you a good example in the urban space. We all look at, um, in neighborhoods, we all look at the gangster, right? Yeah. I have his shirt off. He's tatted down. He's probably buff. Maybe he spent some time and got out. Um, and he's like, he, he's a big dude. And he's, he, there's things that, that men are like, almost like oddly attracted to. They're like, Oh, dude, that guy's gangster. You yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. <laughs> like, no way, no one would say anything to him. He'll he'll mess somebody up. But I also thought for years too, where I looked and I go, but they're not really men. And because in this side of because the guy would have a number of kids, and because some other dude looked at him funny, he had he did not have the self control to not go over to that guy, fight him, stab him, whatever. Gets arrested, goes back inside. Now his children and his and his wife or his baby mama is struggling. Yeah, I'm like, dude, that's not strength. Right. Strength is not you showing that you can make it through prison, which takes a lot of strength. Yeah. But r deep strength would be like you had the wherewithal yeah. to be like, nope. And that comes from deep core identity. Yeah. That comes that's from the insecurity piece again. Yeah. The trauma, like even understanding, like I need to get help. Which is hard so because if be it's all on us, I can't yeah, ask for help. Exactly. And, and then it goes into a whole other thing, right? The stigma that yeah. we also, as the church, have put on a lot of these men, right? Yeah. We've done it as well. Like, we've participated. Not me. I'm going to just go on a record and say that. But <laughs> <laughs> the culture. <laughs> yeah, man. The culture and the tradition, right? It, it is tough. And, oh, my God. And there's... So there is that strength that really only comes from following Christ yeah. because there's the there's the tenderness of Jesus, there's the strength of Jesus. I mean, he's, he's a G too. I mean, he what he took on for us, incredible. Yeah. Um, the laying down his life. Laying down his life. Yeah. Like all that stuff, extremely strong. Absolutely. But but carries the sense of like gentleness, like the fruit of the spirit, right? Yeah. And so there's a part of that, and then it gets it gets really weird in talking about men and masculinity, and then it gets weird with all the cultural things that get placed yeah, on. Yeah. The like levels. there, there are things where I, and I, let's just talk about this. Cause there are things where men act a certain way and I'm, I'm older, right? A little old school. Um, in the, the time I grew up, right. If men act more culturally feminine, I'm, I'm still like, huh? Okay. You know what I mean? And and so there's all those kind of like cultural things where I'm like, all right, you know, like, but, and I'm always trying not to be judgy on it. But if I'm honest too, there's a part where if my son is behaving in certain ways, I'm going to be like, tough or not. I'm going to, hey, man. Yeah, hey, yeah. Like, stop that. You know what I mean? Or, well, well you know, this, this, so, yeah. Yeah. I, it's, I feel that. I'm I'm raising a culture like that. I'm raising a culture like that where even people in my generation have cousins who have sons that would tell them the same thing, you know. Yeah. But then I I'm also like I have a lot of friends that probably lean that way. Yeah. As far as like, but they're probably some of the most safest, secure men that I know. You know. Yeah. Yeah. 
So it, there's that as well. I so there is that, and then there's also, I mean, then and that's there's the, also the whole LGBTQIA plus conversation around all that and within the church, and that that has a space to be talked about as well. And so I'm always I'm aware of that kind of stuff. I'm aware even when my son was little and he, you know, he grew up with a bunch of sisters or he's grown up with a bunch of sisters. So they have all this dress up clothes and he dresses up in something and he's just being, you know, and the culturally and where I'm coming from, like the the thing just to not be like, that's fine. He's just playing. He doesn't know. He has no concept of all this kind of stuff. doesn't mean this or that, or this night won't be a man. So, but really struggling with that. And that also takes a level of strength and, deep um identity shaping yeah to be like you know because i i do i am i know some some men too that that either are more feminine and in the way they express themselves or whatever um but extremely yeah like uh rooted and dialed and they're like oh this that's just how i am yeah right but it's so hard to not be like yeah "Uh," and that's a culture piece for sure. That's yeah, man. Yeah. And so that that's that's interesting for me as well as I think through these kind of things and mm-hmm. I go, what does it mean really mean to be a man and how do I own that? And with the conversation culturally in our in our society where everything's kind of now fluid and there's all this like so yeah. what does it mean to be a man? And then you you also see the reaction to that around like, you know. I'm an alpha and I'm a, yeah. you know, all, and that, I'm right. a sigma. I'm a, all this stuff that I'm like. To prove that they're like the most manly men. Which, which then just shows me, like we always used to make a joke. Sheesh. I won't say the full joke, but if a guy had a car, a truck that yeah. was lifted with huge wheels, we had a joke about that. Cause we're like, oh, he's, he's insecure. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like, cause you have to, you have to kind of prove it to the rest of us that like, yeah. no dude, but I'm really got, tough. Right. Instead of being like, you know, I I feel very secure in my manhood. It's because I take care of my kids. I provide for my family. Yeah, I'm rooted in who I am. I don't, you know, what I mean, I just yeah. I don't. And and I I think uh, you could argue with this, but I think I exude that. Yeah. But not in a way that's like, you know, I, yeah, I need to make sure you know that I'm a man. I just walk in it. Yeah, I, um, and I think it's really simple. So just walking it. I, well, I'm not a man. I can't. Yeah. I can't tell you if it's simple or not. But I'm. Sh- I can. T- I. I want to say that I'm sure that life would be a lot easier if you would, if they would just walk in it. I mean, my yeah. brothers, the way that we were raised, they never treated me like, oh, and you're just a girl. Never. Yeah. yeah. You know, like my brother calls me up for advice, right? Both yeah. brothers, like that's the kind of relationship that we have. I guess my hope for the church, though, is that I could experience that. In, in the in faith spaces yeah. where I could sit on a table with men and not be spoken over or spoken about I'm or in the room or, to, yeah. you know, or down to um, where I have um, the ability to to share my thoughts and it be considered um, yeah. I think where I go to uh, you know when men are around the table planning a conference or something that they will know it'll be easy for them to see that wait, we have no woman here. Maybe we should do that. Yeah. Like, you know, like that's kind of my hope is like men would be uncomfortable without having both voices. Sure. You know what I mean? Because it's a gift that. It's a gift. That doesn't, like you're not getting all you can that's if it. you don't have that voice. If, that if a woman is not, if multiple women, if it's not even, <laughs> right? Or as much as it can be, then you're missing out. Yeah. You're missing out on, on something. That you, that's a blind spot yeah. for you. If 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 there's if the I, I don't want to use the word equity because that's not what I'm saying, but if if there if anyone is missing from the table, you know that you're missing wealth. Yeah. You're missing uh, a perspective, you know. There's something beautiful about I think that balance. You know, and I think God knew what he was doing when he didn't create like Adam number two. Yeah, but created Eve in in all her complexities and her differences. It was intentional. Yeah, absolutely. So let me ask you this: as we kind of wrap up today, what is it? You're in the church, you know what I mean. You're in the kingdom of God. What what do you what do you look for 
in a man that you're like, you know what I mean? That what are you not, I guess, experiencing? Yeah. You know, in church, as you look for for a man, you know what I mean? And you're yeah. and you're like, or you engage. So you talked about the leader space. Yeah. There's that. But what about just even like romantic? Like, yeah, you ask you, me what I look for in a man. I'm just saying, Tommy, you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to help. <laughs> <laughs> just put it out there you know what I mean <laughs> <laughs> but I mean in, in terms of like this idea of like no, yeah. masculinity ma yeah yeah for sure for sure I I think I'm like low key um, I'm kind of like in the middle I'm, yeah. I'm kind of old school I have an old soul sometimes and sure stuff. yeah but I really look for emotional maturity okay yeah right I I I think I look for that I look for someone that allows me to speak it might be that simple but when I meet men and i'm having conversation with them um it's really hard sometimes a lot of men just talk a lot they love to hear themselves speak mm. and they love to sell themselves i when i talk about emotional m maturity i don't want you to sell yourself to me i you know like oh yeah and i've done this and i've done that that's yeah. what i'm talking about um so i pay attention to those things and then whether i'm aware of it or not i'm always looking for a safe i'm always looking for safety mm. Whether it's emotionally, like I feel safe to share more of myself with this person, but also like physically, if I'm being honest, right? Yeah. Um, mentally, like you know, I'm looking for safety, um, yeah. and I, I I've noticed that within myself that I am looking for someone that, um, I I see them making, uh, even like physical like. Even as we go out, like I see chivalry, I guess, in a sense. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think that's important to me. And I think it should be important to a man to to think that way. Like, I yeah. need to protect this person. So in some ways, are you just looking for, these are like almost indicators for does a man lay his life down? Yeah. It's really about, <laughs> like, it's, it's really about security. Yeah. It's it, really well, about being secure in who they are and and. Go ahead. What were you? No, I, yeah, I don't I, want to be that man. That stops you. Go <laughs> no. ahead. I'm sorry. It's really. About, I believe it's really about being secure in who you are. That really shows itself out in those little things. So I kind of look for those indicators. I think if you're going to take anything away from this, and you're a man, there is that the security, the, the security and your identity. Yeah. Um, yeah. That allows you to be humble, allows you to to lay down, allows you to be strong without having to exert your strength. Exactly. They have, you prove know, prove you know, it to by people. what you've done. There is a, but what's interesting in what you're saying is that's like the core space that Satan and the enemy and sin, I think, directs its attack on men is our core identity, mm -hmm. our um, that basically every little boy is just asking like, "Am I enough?" It, or can I, do I have what it takes is what the question is. Yeah. And so often for us, it's like, we don't, I don't have what it takes. And, and the paradox of following Jesus as a man um, in this conversation is you don't have what it takes. Like that's what Jesus feels. And yet he creates you that you do have everything it takes. That's yeah. the weird paradox of yeah, it. And yeah, it's like absolutely. the only way that you fully gain that is by being is by following Christ, being healed, growing that, understanding that, laying your life down. Like that practice of that, like, like creates in us the strength that then honestly, as you describe it, and I know you don't speak for all women, yeah, but as you describe it, that's what I've basically heard my whole life from women. Like that's what they are looking for there's that there's that core thing now you know people might outside of body of christ might be like i just need him to make a lot of money and the yeah. you know all that but no i mean for the sisters who are on serious about following jesus and they're looking for a man who's following jesus it's that piece it's and I, i've even like I, I thank god i feel like i've been god's really rooted me in that and it's it's that piece that i've heard from other younger men than me that are like man i i really like how you just how you operate, man. And but what I think they're saying is there's a there's a rootedness to you. It's not because I'm out there like proving to them and I'm better than them, or I, you know, mm -hmm. obviously not. It's just they're recognizing something that's like that there's a there's a core identity piece of confidence. Yeah. And that confidence isn't rooted on all these cultural things, not rooted yeah. on um 
what you uh, look on like. On these fake yeah, things, yeah. All the things, yeah. It's rooted in like, I'm loved. I'm a child of God. I'm a mm-hmm. son of God. And he loves me. And because you know that, you're able to love others well. And I'm not threatened yeah. by others. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, well, you're able to love that woman well. You're able to, yeah. you know, that type of thing. So, yeah. Yeah. I will say it still comes out. Like, I still struggle with that. I think every man does. It still yeah. comes out. And even like in in how we interact with our kids or our wives yeah. or our friends or yeah. our, our people we're leading or people we're under. Yeah. So, but yeah, man. Well, thank you so much, Lynn. I appreciate you speaking into my manhood um, and masculinity today. <laughs> So friends, we hope this has been helpful. Yeah. I hope you're having these conversations because, um, and I think it was important that we're having these conversations also with women, that yeah, it's not right. just a, a conversation with men, but you know, as almost like a, like, help me see what you yeah. see, because that helps us. And so I hope friends that this was helpful to you. Make sure you, you subscribe, like, you know, share, and we'll see you guys on the next time on the Radical Mode. Peace.